Um, and this is an approach that, going back to a, a, a figure that I showed yesterday, remember this is the, the extrapolation is the use of the model to make predictions for environmental values that are beyond the range of what the model was calibrated for. So if what, uh, this is our suitability score or probability of occurrence, it could be. This is our environmental variable. If, if all our occurrence records come from part of this range, so you don't have any values above a certain uh, value, if this, if this was a, a temperature, then maybe this is 10 degrees C, and you don't have any values above 10 degrees C, to take a, a random example, then whenever, you, whenever you're predicting into this space, um, this is a kind of a niche space, then you are extrapolating. And you have to ask the question, well, what is the model doing there? And we talked about, well, you know, it, it could make any number of assumptions about what's going on. Well, the, 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 there are different ways to do this in MaxEnt, but, but the default and what is used um, the vast, vast majority of the time uh, is turned in, usually turned to clamping, but is, is, is this red line here. What, what we do is when we're beyond the range that the model was calibrated for, we're simply going to set that probability score, um, in, in this case, to equal the highest value um, at, at, at the edge, edge of the training range, basically. So you just clamp that value and keep it constant. Which has limitations, of course. In this case, it, it may well be that that value should come down. But at least we have a very explicit way of saying this is what the model is doing, so we understand what assumptions are behind it and what behaviour we're going to expect. There's no kind of um, uncertainty as to what what the model is going to do there. We know we know exactly what it's doing. Okay. Um, what, what are the actual basics? We're going to try and do this just in, in one slide, but we're basically, as with the other approaches, we're working in a raster world, we're working in a gridded world, so the whole of the environment that we're working with is split into, uh, uh, the, the, the landscape is split into uh, a number of cells. Um, the, each cell has a suite of environmental variables associated with it, you know, these are all our predictive layers that we can load, that we've been, that we've been talking about, it might be temperature, precipitation, soil type, you know, we can use a categorical variable if we want. Those are the environmental variables. So every cell, if you kind of drill down in the GIS, every cell would have a value for all of these different variables. And then, of course, we have the occurrence records, which are, it, what we think of, they, they are samples from some known, unknown probability distribution that defines the species distribution. So the thinking is that, that there is some unknown probability distribution. The probability, based on the environmental variables of a species occurring in a particular cell, and that is what we're trying to estimate. Okay? So when we think about using max sense models, a key point is that you are now beginning to actually work with probabilities. Okay? You've been working with a kind of index of suitability with bioclin, and many of the different models kind of have different interpretations of what the outputs are. One of the good things about MaxEn is that it can be interpreted really as uh, a probability. So the task in terms of the machine learning approach is to actually estimate that unknown probability. Uh, the the, the MaxEn way of thinking about this and, and, and the, the principle of maximum entropy is, is a kind of, kind of generic machine learning approach to many different problems. It's not specific to ecological niche model or species distribution modeling, but it's the idea that the, the, the best estimate of, a, of this unknown probability surface um, is that which has the maximum entropy subject to constraints that are imposed by what is known. Okay? So the key bits there are the, the, the principle of maximum entropy and the constraints. Now maximum entropy simply means the distribution that is most spread out or closest to uniform. Okay? So it would just, we'd, we're assuming that you know, if, if we don't know anything about the landscape, then the maximum entropy principle is that, well, we just have to predict equal probability across the whole surface. Right? But we do know something about the landscape. We know a lot about the environment. So they, those are where the constraints come in. So the constraints are defined by the environmental variables. And put very simply, what the approach is trying to do is optimize such that the mean of each variable is um, close to, based on some criteria, the mean from the known occurrence records. So those are our kind of constraints on, on the probability um, dis distribution. Now, the... Um, 
the maths behind that becomes very involved and, and we don't have time and, and, and I'm not best placed to, to explain that to you. But Stephen, uh, Philip in particular, is, is a picture of, of, of Stephen, um, uh, has, has put together a number of papers and tutorials and things that we're going we're to point you towards for actually drilling down and getting, for those that are interested, the, the, the mathematical background behind this. But we want to get you using it. And unfortunately, Stephen, uh, who is, um, has very diverse uh, interests, um, but is, is, is a, an extremely good, ultimately, computer scientist and, and, and programmer, um, and he has put a lot of effort into working with us ecologists, if you like, to put together um, a very user-friendly um, interface. And so that's one of the good reasons for getting you guys going with this particular approach. There are good theoretical reasons for doing that as well. It performs well compared to other methods, and it's theoretically robust. There are a whole suite of reasons, but one of them is simply that there's a very nice software program to actually start doing that, and it, and it looks it looks something like this, but it looks exactly like this. So what I'm going to do now, because you know we've got probably got 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, I'm going to pull up the software and start um, talking you through how to put some data in. Because we are so limited for time for this, there's going to be some time for practice later on, but we wanted to throw this out to you. It's so user-friendly, there's so much documentation to get you going. I would encourage you, if you want to follow me on your computers, then that's fine, but I would encourage you to just, just watch, because it's straightforward, and I'm going to just kind of whisk through it, because, because we, don't, we don't have an awful, an awful lot of time. All right, folks, so sorry about that. This is going to give me neck ache, but... Um, Persevere with it for now, this is, this is fine. Um, so, so, I'm going to talk you through in a very practical sense how to get in basically the same files that you've just been using for the lines and the elephants. We're going to put them into MaxN, they're essentially the same files, uh, and we're going to run them all. Okay, that's all we're going to do now, so you get to learn the basics of, of the interface. and then. For those of you who run with this, you know, there's a few of us here have quite a lot of experience as, as users with different ways of parameterizing the model and, and some of the functions to do um, partitioning of data and, and jackknifing and things like that. So we, we can talk through those, but what we want to do just in the allotted time right now is get everyone just up, up and running with, with, with the basic model. Okay? So. And I did a very quick run with the. Uh, with the elephant and, and, and lion data, and, and it seemed to work. Now, Enrique assured me that it would work, but I've known Enrique long enough to <laughs> question that. No, I need to. Um, all right, so you all have this. If, if you go, don't do it right now, but on, on your sticks, if, if you go under run modeling programs, there's, there's a, a, a MaxEnt folder here. There's no installations that you need or anything here. You're going to need to have Java running on your machine, um, that we'll make sure is, is happening, but that's freely available and, and shouldn't be a problem. And then all we're going to do is launch this .bat file. This is just a little batch file that's actually going to call the, the, the Java program. So you're going to get a, a, a window that, that slots up behind. This is a, a bit of a, an annoyance that this always has to remain there, but just minimize it. You never really, uh, to start with, you, know, you never really need to interact with that. Um, Sorry, this is just a bit tricky to do. All right. So, what what we have here is 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 the is the basic user interface. Okay. So we've talked all along about what do we need for these building these models. We need two things. We need to know about the current records for the species and we need to know a bunch about the environment. So how's this set up? Samples, this is basically our occurrence records. These are our occurrence records for the species we're going to load in here and in here we're going to load in our environmental variables. This we're going to point towards a CSV file, that's a comma separated values file, I'll show you in a minute. And here we're going to point towards a directory which has a bunch of ASCII files in it. Okay, those are the great raster layers that you've um, been using this morning. Okay, so um, 
let me show you what those files look like. Uh, again, if you go to the Nairobi data folder and then the biological data. These two files, so far as I understand, are exactly the same information, they're just formatted ever so slightly differently. The maxent file, let's open with, say, just WordPad. Remember that this morning we used a tab delimited text file? Well, this is very, very similar. This is just a, a, a comma delimited or a, a comma separated um, text.